We have traced the history of the Geneva Bible from its inception until the time when Archbishop Laud forbade its importation into England because it would create an economic hardship on British printers. If it were not available and unable to be purchased, the British people would then turn to the King James Version. Although it was forbidden to be imported, it appears that copies continued to be imprinted and smuggled into England. The final edition of the Geneva Bible was printed at Amsterdam in 1644 by Thomas Stafford. Even British printers continued to print the Geneva Bible, backdating the copies to 1599. This leads to a fascinating story that we can just outline briefly because much of the narrative is surmised and not able to be proven directly. It stands as a parable that illustrates both the longevity and influence of the Geneva Bible. There is a copy of the Geneva Bible New Testament, which I have seen, that contains a title page stating that it was printed in 1640 by Thomas Stafford of Amsterdam. There are several distinguishing things about this Bible. First, it is just the New Testament, and it is a folio in size. While there were editions of the Geneva Bible New Testament printed separately, they were printed in octavo and not folio. The historical catalog of printed editions of Holy Scripture by Darlow and Moore does indeed contain an entry for a 1640 folio edition of the Geneva Bible printed by Thomas Stafford of Amsterdam. However, because the book in question is just the New Testament, it means that the Bible was divided and the New Testament rebound separately. When the New Testament portion of the Geneva Bible was rebound, it was rebound as an interleaved book. In other words, there were blank sheets bound between the printed pages of the New Testament. On these interleaved pages, there are handwritten sermons by an anonymous minister. The sermons are evangelical in nature and are accurate expositions of the Word of God. Nowhere is there any information about the person who composed these sermons. Many of the sermons are dated in the 1780s, which was 140 years after the Stafford edition and 220 years after the first printing of the Geneva Bible. That is the total information that can be gleaned from the perusal of this book. However, may we not allow our imagination some freedom as we think about this Bible? Here was an unknown minister of the Word of God, living in England, ministering to his flock by expounding to them the Word of God. He continued to use the Geneva Bible and not the King James Version, although the King James Version had been in print for over 170 years and was the ecclesiastical Bible of the Church of England. Who was this person? Why did he use the Geneva Bible and not the King James? From where did he procure it? Who were the people to whom he ministered? Where did he minister? These are some of the unanswered questions concerning this New Testament. But the evidence that we do possess leads us to this conclusion. There was a faithful pastor in England ministering in the 18th century who sought to feed his flock with the pure word of God. Consciously or unconsciously, he faithfully carried out Tyndale's prayer to set before the people the scriptures in their native language so that they could follow the progress, order, and meaning of the text and the goal of the translators of the Geneva Bible to set up again the lantern of God's word in England. This Geneva Bible is an illustration of how those desires were fulfilled. <music>